Buddha um, in art, and not Buddha, but um, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> his awesome um, victory um, again against Muda in early 1990. Double um, A. Arne Anderson. Uh, this all took place at the Great American Bash in 1990. Very, very good pay per view. Very all as many of you do know. Remember for Steam and. Um, Ric Flair classic main event match where Steam became the World Heavyweight Championship the title really meant something the first time in his career um, It was the base of the dudes of the attitudes and uh, which combines of JYD uh, Mr. Wonderful and also Elegante and then the Steiners um, kicked in Abigail, um as well Flying Brian all these guys uh, Played a huge role in Steam winning the title and also in the six-man tag team match uh, between these six guys, it was an awesome, awesome mid card kind of like a match between the horsemen and the dudes with attitudes. Um, JYD didn't have a huge role in the entire match. It was basically, you know, spot, spot for um, some of the face guys to get their work in and also uh, the horsemen to get some of their finishers in. But Elegante was, the, was basically the highlight of the match that everybody in the company wanted to highlight. That the horsemen were scared of, but you know it really didn't amount to much. Um, the person who got the biggest push out of that entire six-man tag was John Yard Dog. He would eventually have a very unforgettable um, feud with Rick Nature Boy Rick Flair. Um, it, it, it just was weird. It really didn't mean much in 1990. Um, it could have meant something, but the def I think WCW was so hell bent on pushing Sting as they should have been. Because Sting was the focal point of the company. He was the new, young, brash a guy who had faced Ric Flair two years ago prior to, um, prior to winning the championship at the, prior to the Clash of the Champions in 1988, the very first one in Tennessee. And, you know, although many would say that they didn't do a really good job in doing it, I think they did a decent job. It's just that at the time, you know, JYD is a face. It, you know, if they have more heels who were very highly touted, you know, by so many different organizations at the time, coming to their organization, maybe things would have been different because Sting really didn't have much. And him having a feud with Junkyard Dog or Junkyard Dog having a feud with Ric Flair just didn't seem right that that year. It could have been, but Sting was so fresh off of winning the World Championship. Ric Flair had lost it. Of course, the natural progression would continue this angle between Sting and Ric Flair, but hey, if they were a little bit more creative, JYD would have been an excellent guy to feud with Ric Flair um, while Sting was able to try to find more opponents to face. But as I said before, during that time in the NWA, it really wasn't huge heel guys other than the course. So JYD becomes, you know, very, very forgettable. Again, I hate to say that in World Championship Wrestling, you know, he'll have these spurts where, you know, he's a big name, and then again, he'll have these spurts where he's not that big anymore. Um, he, during the brief run he had in WC, WCW in 1990, um, after the Ric Flair stuff, he, um, been feuding with him over the World Championship prior to their angle with Sting. Um, he won the six-man tag team championship with Ricky Morton and Tommy Rich, and at this time, the six-man tag team championship doesn't mean anything anymore in wrestling. Um, it just, just doesn't anymore. Um, there, to me, there's really only one place that that, that six-man tag team title meant anything, and it was in world-class championship wrestling. And this is a completely different six-man tag team championship. Um, but I think the York Foundation had it at once in 1991, and that was probably the last time that it really meant something. Um, also, I remember the Fabulous Street Birds with Michael Hayes and Jimmy Garvin as the United States Tag Team Champions, teaming with Bad Street, who was AKA Brad Armstrong, winning the um, winning the uh, Tag Team Championship, a six-man Tag Team Championship. So, um, you know, overall, I had to say that JYD's tenure in WCW was something that was just mismanaged. And not appropriately thought out, and that's Jim Hurd for you. You know, if anybody knows Jim Hurd, was who was the executive vice president of World Championship Wrestling at the time. You know, you just <laughs> you take Jim Word for Jim Jim Hurd for what he's worth, which is not that much in terms of wrestling um, knowledge and how to build angles. To me, the appropriate thing for JYD to have done come in gradually. 
be an ally for Sting, but not feud JYD and Ric Flair prior to Sting and Ric Flair. I thought that was a mistake. Have Sting win the championship, and afterward you could start possibly planning a feud with Ric Flair and JYD before Ric Flair gets back to Sting later in the year. And it was just mismanaged with the whole Black Scorpion thing, which I thought was an interesting gimmick with Ole Anderson, you know, as the voiceover, but it really wasn't great for all parties involved. Um, JYD could have benefited, but he left. And, you know, after that, we really don't see him that much in wrestling anymore until he resurfaced in WCW again in 1992 to help out Ron Simmons and his feud with um, the likes of Cactus Jack and Abdullah Butcher in early 1992, uh, which culminated in earlier portions of that year on several of the pay-per-view events that they had going on. But, you know, um, you know, overall, it seems like right after he left the WWE, his name just diminished from the public eye in pro wrestling. And it really wouldn't be, I'm, I'm sad to say this, until his passing in um, 1998, June 2nd, 1998 to be specific, after his, after his, um, after you know, going to his daughter's high school, high school, um, um, graduation, um, he is involved in a um, very bad crash um, after falling asleep at the wheel um, in 1998, right, literally right after his daughter's graduation, and um, he passed away. And um, his body is buried in North Carolina in uh, Wadesboro, to be specific. And you know, his daughter Latoya Ritter, who accepted his plaque. Um, um, and was there on his behalf during the Hall of Fame in 2004 prior to, right during WrestleMania 2020 in New York City um, is you know I think I heard that she was an inspiring wrestler but I don't know if she was really deep into it but um, you know thought it looks just like her like him and you know it's really sad that you know somebody of this caliber who was so over in this business isn't here anymore to uh, receive those accolades and he would have been awesome for an NWA Wrestling Fan Fest and all those conventions and stuff like that and even shoot interviews to hear his side of the story but you know he passed away at a time where the internet was booming the dot-com industry was just was just fresh um, from becoming so huge and booming uh, prior to the crash around 2000-2001 um, before the bubble burst, so you know, RS video, K fake um, commentaries, um, you know, high spots, Hollywood entertainment, all of these organizations, I think, would have been glad to reach out to JYD and see if he would share his thoughts, and that would have been really, really cool. But it just wasn't meant to be, and it's one of the reasons, you know, why I'm very 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 proud um, by the fact that I'm here discussing JYD's career right now because to me JYD is one of the most popular wrestlers ever to come come around wrestling he had an easy character a dog who's very nice to children who's very nice to people but if you make that dog mad and if you were a heel he'll get you and I think everybody likes a superhero like that and JYD was definitely one of a kind. But that was this has been an awesome edition of Scoot Paradigm. It wasn't as long as I thought, I thought this could be like an hour and a half long. Um, I'm glad it wasn't because um, I don't want to, you know, put all of you guys uh, to sleep uh, by us talking about it. Um, but um, I enjoy discussing JYD here, and hopefully, everybody out there in the world uh, will. Um, after watching this or by chance talk about JYD to your friends go ahead go on YouTube and look up some of his matches come back here watch this episode all over again or do whatever you have to do but support a lot of our fallen um, heroes a lot of our wrestlers who have passed away JYD obviously one of them and definitely one of the most popular wrestlers ever in the uh, um, later 20 latter 20th century in pro wrestling uh, for all the great folks of In Your Head Wrestling, um, IYHWrestling.com, um, 
for all of um, the heady, members of the Headyverse, especially El Santo Loco who contributed to this edition. Um, my name is Specsun. Thank you for tuning in. And remember, Secluded Paradigm number 20 will be debuting fairly shortly. I cannot but it's going to be really, really cool to talk about the individual, the subject, who will be discussed on that edition of Paradigm. But this one's about JYD, Junkyard Dog. Rest in peace, my friend. Thank you for all of everything you ever did in the world of wrestling, all the entertainment you gave us. My name is Specsun. Peace out, peeps, and credits roll.